Hello, math learners. In this video, we are going to introduce sequences and go over a few examples of sequences. So to start, let's define a sequence. A sequence, you can just think of that as an infinite list of numbers. So it's a list of numbers that goes on and on forever. So here's a couple of examples. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Keep on going. Um, on and on forever. That's one example of a sequence. Another example of a sequence, we have one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on. So that second one is the Fibonacci sequence. So sequence, just an infinite list of numbers. Now let's define a few ways that we can describe a sequence. So one of the ways that we can describe a sequence is we can just give a bunch of the terms. So for example, we could have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, like I showed you up there. We could have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on, or any other example like that where we just list a whole bunch of numbers. So we want to list a bunch of numbers enough that people can get the pattern. That's one option for defining a sequence. Another option is we can describe the rule explicitly. So here we have Sn is equal to 3n for n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So using this rule, we could then write out a bunch of the terms. We could plug in n equals 1 and get S1 is equal to 3. We could plug in n equals 2 and get 3 times 2 is 6. We could plug in n equals 3, and then Sn would um, be S3 equals 3 times 3, we'd get 9, and so on. This would give us all the multiples of 3. So those are two of our options so far, just to list out a bunch of the terms or describe the explicit rule. A third way that we can define a sequence is we can define it recursively. So we can give the first term or the first few terms, and then we can give a rule for how to get future terms based on already described terms. So for example, let's have this rule here. S1 is equal to one, meaning our first term is one. And then this rule is saying that to find a term Sn, we're going to take the previous term, Sn minus one, and we will add three on. So using this rule, we can now write out our sequence. We already know that the first term is one. So our sequence starts with one. Then we know to get S2, we will take the previous term, which is one, and we will add three on. So we'll have one plus three, giving us four. To get the next term, we take four and we add three on, giving us seven. To get the next term, we take seven, add three on again, and get 10. We just keep adding three over and over and over because that is our rule. All right, so that is what our sequence could look like. So some sequences are easier to describe recursively. Other sequences are easier to describe with an explicit rule. It just depends on what the sequence is. Um, and if we have the sequence defined recursively, we can always produce that list of numbers. Or if we have the list of numbers, we can either describe the sequence um, with the explicit rule or recursively or both. So we can move between these different rules on um, these different ways of describing our sequence. Um, and that's what we'll do a little bit with the rest of the video. OK, one more example of a sequence that's defined recursively. Here in this one, I give you the first two terms. S1 is 1, S2 is also 1. And then our general rule is to get the term Sn plus 2, we'll take the sum of the previous two terms. So we know that the sequence starts with one and another one. So the first two terms are one and one. Then to get the third term, we add up the previous two terms. So our third term is one plus one or two. 
our fourth term is found by adding the second term and the third term. So we'll add one and two to get three. To find our fifth term, we add up terms three and four. So we'll add up these two terms here to get five. And we can just keep going like that, add up the two previous terms to get the next one and the next one and so on. Okay, so let's do a few examples. Here you can pause the video um, and go ahead and try to write the first five sequence, write the first five terms of the following sequences. So we've got Sn is equal to 2n for n equals one, two, and so on. Our second term, our second sequence, we have Sn equals n squared plus one for n equals one, two, three, and so on. And then Sn, our third sequence is going to be one over n plus four. Again, we'll have n equals one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, and try to write the first five terms of each of those sequences. All right, let's go through this together now. So we'll go starting with part A. When we plug in n equals one, we get our first term S1. So our first term is two to the one, or in other words, our first term is two. Then our second term is two squared, or in other words, four. Our third term is two cubed, so we've got eight. Fourth term is two to the four, we get 16. Next term is two to the five, we get 32, and we could just keep going. All right, so that is part A. We've written the first five terms of that sequence. Next, let's go on to part B. Sn is equal to n squared plus one. So we'll start with n equals one. When we take one squared plus one, we get two. Now let's work with n equals two. We'll take two, square it, and add one. So we've got two squared plus one, or in other words, four plus one gives us five. Next, we've got three squared plus one, so that gives us 10. Then after that, we've got four squared plus one, so we've got 17. And then after that, we've got five squared plus one, so we get 26. And we could keep on going like that. All right, now our last sequence here, Sn is equal to one over n plus four. When we plug in n equals one, we get one over one plus four. So we get one fifth. Our next term is one over two plus four. So we get one sixth. Our next term is one over three plus four. So we get one seventh, then one eighth, then one ninth, and so on. All right, so those are the first few terms of our three sequences here. Okay, so in the previous example, we had an explicit rule and then we wrote the first few terms of the sequence. Now we are going to work with recursively defined sequences. So write the first few terms of the sequence, or here are the first few terms of the sequence. We want you to find the recursively defined rule. Okay, so this is saying that our first term is one, second term is two, third term is three, fourth term is four, and so on. So take a moment, you can pause the video and try to write the sequence with a recursive rule. So fill in this part here in pink. All right, so with a recursively defined sequence, we want to start off by defining the first, at least one term. Sometimes we need to define a couple terms, but here we just need to define one and then provide the rule. So here we'll give our first term is one. And then we need to think about when we move from one to two, what happens? When we move from two, to three, what happens? When we move from three to four, what happens? And we can see when we go from one to two, there's a few different things that are happening. One option is we are adding one on. 
another option is we are multiplying by two. So let's see which one of these rules makes sense, going from two to three. If we take two and add one on, we do get three. And we can see if we took two and multiplied it by two, we would not get three. So multiplying by two is not the rule. It looks like adding one is. And we can um, look uh, going from three to four and make sure that that still works. If we do three plus one, we do indeed get four. So it looks like that is our rule. So our rule is S1 equals one, and then the nth term is equal to the previous term plus one. So here's our rule. All right, next example, let's take the sequence Sn equals two to the n, and we're gonna rewrite that as a recursively defined sequence. So remember in the last one, we said we need to define the first term and then give the rule. So that's what we're gonna do in this next example as well. And little hint for you, when we have the rule, um, the explicit rule, sometimes it can help to write the first few terms of the sequence. Um, that can help you to see what um, the rule could be to go from term to term. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video for a minute and try to write our rule here. S1 equals something, Sn is equal to, then figure out the rule. All right, so we can see that our first term is two. And then to get from the second, from the first term to the second term, we are multiplying by two. To get from the second term to the third term, we're multiplying by two. Each time we're multiplying by two. So we are going to take the term before it and then multiply by two. So Sn is equal to two times Sn minus one for n equals to two, three, four, and so on. Okay, in other words, the nth, the nth entry is just double the previous entry. Now, once you have your rule figured out, it's always a good idea to check your work. So let's forget about these numbers that we've already written here. And let's just make sure that um, when we use this rule and write out a bunch of terms that it indeed matches the terms that we found earlier. So according to this recursively defined rule here, the first term is two. All right, so that's great. The second term should be two times the previous. So we'll have two times two or four. The next term should be two times the previous. So we'll have two times four, eight. Next term will be double the previous term. So we'll have 16, double that, we get 32, double that, we get 64 and so on. So it looks like that checks out our recursively defined sequence indeed matches our explicit rule that we found up here. All right, so just to recap, we saw that we have a few different ways to define a sequence. We can just list out a whole bunch of the terms. We can give an explicit rule. So by explicit rule, we mean the rule depends only on n and then um, constants or maybe log or other functions like that. Or we can define the sequence recursively, meaning that each term is going to be written as a function of one or more of the previous terms. So here we're saying the nth term depends on the one previous term. With our Fibonacci sequence here, the n plus tooth term depends on the nth term and the n plus oneth term. All right, so that is your whirlwind introduction to sequences. Hope that went well. In the next video, we're going to talk about convergence of sequences.